Yachting International Radio is hosting their first mental health and yachting forum, the Yachting Mind and Wellness Forum, on June 28th and 29th. This free online event features an esteemed list of speakers, including Gary Napier and Hugo Ortega. Join us for sessions that address sobriety on yachts, how to choose a therapist, dealing with depression while on board, and much more. Don't miss this opportunity to engage in vital discussions and enhance your well-being within the yachting community. Book your spot today. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Blogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome Gary King. You may know him as one of the stars of Below Deck Sailing Yacht. I know him as a kid who used to hang out and party with me and my daughter back in the day. Gary, welcome. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Yeah, good to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been. I was calculating it just the other day because we've been having conversations back and forth on what's up, trying to arrange this. And it's been over 10 years since the last time that I saw you, aside from seeing you in the news. Yeah, right. I know that's crazy. Where does time go? I was actually just speaking to my mom about that the other day. And it's 10 years. It feels like just the other day. And you said it's over 10 years now. I remember it clearly. Yeah, so... Scary. Yeah. Scary. When we did get in touch, I could actually picture the, the last table. It was in, oh, it was in Palma. In Havana. In Havana. Yeah. In yeah. Palma, Havana. And I can picture you guys, you and Jerry, and I, I forget that, I think Jerry's boyfriend at the time and somebody Jimmy. else, all sitting. Yeah. Yeah, sitting at the Jimmy. table in exactly the same spot and the chairs. But Yeah. Funny. Oh, eh? gosh. I'm actually still good friends with Jimmy. Funny enough, he's married now, if you must know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah. Moving. Everyone's yeah. moving on in life. And yeah, exactly. All that we get, I think that's a plan, really. I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I remember. I think you were a dead hand back then, and you had just started. You were under. You were in your early twenties at that stage. Yeah, I would have been mid twenties. I didn't even know what boat I would be working on then. But yeah, I guess I was transitioning from a deck hand to a boatswain to a mate at that stage. I'd say, yeah. That's- Ten years ago, I'd have to go look on. I'd have to backtrack to see exactly what boat I was working on then. Well, generally, you've come I, a long way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, let's see. But it's been a good ride so far. I've loved the yachting industry ever since I've been in it, and I highly recommend it to people. Yeah, it's it is a great way to get out there, go and explore, meet people. You get paid to travel. I've loved the ocean my whole life, so it only made sense for me to work on yachts. What got you into below deck? Because it's funny. Yachting International Radio is all about the actual yachting community, and Bravo TV is all about mainstream media and reaching the general population. A lot of these kids that are coming on board today, they see being a yachty and working on yachts as what they see on Below Deck. Can you really define the difference? Because you've been both. So can you define the difference between what it is like as just a normal yachty going to work every day or someone who is a yachty on Below Deck? I think being a yachty in everyday life, you don't have as much pressure on you just due to the fact there's no cameras following you. Uh, I think that's quite a big, it plays a big part having cameras in your face. And generally a charter on a super yacht lasts roughly a week. Generally, they're not shorter than a week. It'll be either a week, two weeks or 10 days. And with Below Deck, your charters are only 48 hours. So in this 48 hours, they try and do everything that they would do in a normal charter in a week. So you'd pick up the guest, you'd go for a sail, and before you've even anchored, you're getting stuff ready for a beach setup. Then it's a beach setup straight back to the boat, then a sail, and then we're sailing while we while the chef's cooking. Generally on super yachts, the owners or the charter guests want a good meal. They're not going to sail the boat hard until 1.30 till they have to eat lunch. There's a few irregularities in Below Deck, but most of which is what you get in the yachting industry. They've got to make a TV show out of it. The people that they employ on the show aren't really yachties. It's more people coming in for drama or for good TV, which makes my life a lot harder because I am a yachtie and I know what the yachting industry entails. Uh, And I try and give the guests the best possible time they've had on a yacht. And when you've got people that's never stepped foot on a boat before, don't know the terminology, don't know how to do um, knots or anything like that. I was there once, don't get me wrong. But we're not going to hire someone. No captain in this world is going to hire or chief officer is going to hire someone the day before charter starts that's never stepped foot on a boat unless they're looking for that role. No, no. It makes for good TV, but at the end, it's it actually makes me look bad because I get frustrated when 
obviously you don't see everything that's on TV and me explaining to people how to do things over and over again. It's guys, we in charter season, surely you should know how to tie up a bender. And then they'll cut it and edit it. And then they'll show me getting frustrated with my deckhand who I've told a million times or shown a million times. But in the TV show, it's only portrayed me showing her once or twelve him once about the knot. So it makes me look bad. But at the end, I signed up for it. So I know what it entails. And yeah, that's it. But for the most part, it's pretty similar below deck as it's normal yachting industry, I would say. What do you say to those people out there that say, once you're on below deck, there is no possibility that you're going to find work after below deck within the yachting industry as a whole? Do you believe that or do you think that? Uh, well, I'm, I'm actually taking the summer off. So I haven't worked since below deck since we last filmed. I've been traveling and just been finding myself and living my best life. So I've got a few deliveries. I did a delivery to Greece and now I go to Norway at the end of this month. But I have had a few job opportunities. So I don't know. I haven't actually put my name out there to have a permanent position. With, with it. Well, saying that, I still have had a few job opportunities as uh, crew agents have sent my CV out. So I don't think it's made a big difference for me. But until I actually look for a permanent job, I couldn't give you a definite answer on that. But I would one thing on that, I would say if someone wants to join the yachting industry, I would recommend joining the yachting industry before Below Deck. Below Deck's a TV show. It's not the yachting industry. It's a TV show portrayed or it portrays people working on a yacht. It's not yachting. It's a TV show. That's the primary thing of it. And then it shows yachting. So if you want to do yachting, it's not going to be like Below Deck. You're not going to get tips like Below Deck. The guests aren't going to be as easy as Below Deck. The crew doesn't always get along well like they do. I don't think we do on Below Deck either. But yeah, I'd highly recommend doing the yachting industry, but definitely that before you want to get onto the, on the TV show. Unless fame is what you want and the yachting is not, then by all means, apply for the TV show. You've been known as a little bit of a ladies' man. And actually, I can verify that from even 10 years ago. You were a little bit of a ladies' man even then. Let me ask you as far as relationships on board go is that something that you would not that you've ever steered away from it but is that something that you would recommend others steer away from is having relationships with those you work with in such close quarters to steer away from that would be very difficult if you've got feelings for someone on board on the last boats i worked on we were doing back-to-back seasons so we would do the mediterranean season be here for four or five months be a month in Palmer or somewhere getting ready for the Caribbean, then four or five months in the Caribbean, back here for a month. So in a year, you only get two months where you're not really working, where you can actually go on land and explore. So to steer away from a relationship on the boat is very difficult. You live and work with these people 24-7. And I guess that's why most of the Yachtis find their significant other while they're working with them because you're always together, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you don't get time to go off and meet other people. And if you do, you're not going to stay there very long. You might be in a place for a week. You meet someone really nice. And then you don't go there again for a year, maybe more. So it's very difficult to have a normal relationship outside of yachting. And I guess that's why most of my friends that are in relationships now, or all their girlfriends or boyfriends were or are working on yachts because it's the same lifestyle. So yes, it's not easy having a relationship. And that's why I... I'd say don't steer clear of it. But one thing I can, excuse me, one thing I can say on that is you are stuck on a boat. So if things do go sour, there's not much space around for you. And it's not nice having conflict on a boat. There's, you don't get your own personal space. There is no personal space on a boat. So you've got to just take that into consideration. That if it's not going to work out, one of us are going to lose their jobs. Maybe the captain fires both of them because they, I don't know, or maybe one leaves because they can't see the other one. But There's a lot of it that it entails with having a relationship on a boat. The ins and outs, the pros and the cons of it. Yes, you work and live together. But then it's also, it's a fairy tale world you're living. You're living on the super yacht where you're not paying rent, you're not paying food, you're getting paid to travel. If you leave in the summer season, Sally, now mid-June, came back in October, I wouldn't have to spend a cent, not one cent for five months. And this is not the real world. Where do you not spend one cent of your money for five months? So you live with your girlfriend and you're living this exotic life, living on the sailing boats. And then when you go on holiday, you 
tend to stay in nice hotels because you've saved all this money and then you go back to work. So you don't really have everyday problems like, I don't know, dog food to clean up, who didn't hang up the washing, who didn't clean the dishes. There's none of this. We've got mortgages to pay or bills to pay. There's none of this that's the real life, the real world scenarios. So you just got to take that into account with the person that you were. I guess it's akin to during the pandemic. For those out there that wouldn't realize what a relationship is like, whether it be, yes, a super yacht can be 150 meters. They're big, but realistically, if you're on that boat 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it becomes quite small after a while. Yeah, so, it's very claustrophobic on a yacht. No if, doubt. If people want to try to understand, it would be like during the pandemic, being stuck in your house or your apartment with your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and all that arises from those three months stuck at home, not able to yeah, leave. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the same concept. For sure. Well, either make or break a relationship, to be honest. If you can live and work on a yacht with someone, you've done pretty well. But then, like I said, it's not the real life scenario. You're not living in a house. There's no problems in the house that you've got to fix and stuff like that. On the boat, you're always fixing stuff because you're getting paid to fix it. But in a house, I know because I've just bought this, to motivate you to do all the work is not easy, especially if you're working every day. And then that creates frustration between a relationship. Yeah, I'm not in a relationship, so I can't really give much advice. Yeah. There's been a bit of controversy on the show. We're not going to go into that. But what is next for Gary? Are you going to return at some point back to Bravo in the next, say, five years? Or are you going to go your separate way? Are you going to put uh, your feet on dry land for a bit? What's your long-term view? Ideally, I'd like to do another couple of seasons. Whether they ask me back or not, that's up to them. We don't find out until maybe a month prior to filming whether we're going to be asked back or not which makes it a bit difficult to actually plan or do anything as most of the people that's done multiple seasons would like to be asked back. And yeah, we just don't know until filming, but for the moment, I think I'm just going to hang out in Palmer for the summer. I've got a few deliveries to do and yeah, I need to get my apartment sorted out and I feel I need to be a bit more grounded. I've been working on yachts for gosh, it must be like 14 years now. And I've been doing a lot of back to back seasons. So they made Caribbean, which has been great. But now I just want to be a bit more grounded, have my feet on dry land for a little bit, and yeah, just see where it goes. I've had a few offers, and yeah, I just want to spend time at home, get my flat ready, and yeah, see see what's out there. So are we going to see little Gary's running around at some point in the future? I, I hope so. Gosh, yeah, that's also a big thing of working on yachts is finding a relationship is not easy. And I'm not getting any younger. I'm 36 now. And yeah, I'd like to find a relationship and have kids one day. So uh, that's definitely on the cards, but I don't want to rush into that either. Um, I've had a few things going on in my life recently. So I want to just find myself and be happy with myself, have confidence in myself before I go out there and try and find a relationship. You have been, I would say, in the last four years, one of the sort of most followed characters on Below Deck. You see your face popping up with it. What would you attribute that to what is it about gary king that makes people want to follow him and um i don't know that's quite interesting (laughs) because it's like it's quite funny and on below deck you get people that other or don't like people from watching the tv show i get that a lot but then when i meet people in person there's very seldomly do i meet someone that doesn't like me i think i'm quite charming and charismatic the only thing is people have people have a perception of me because they've seen me on a TV show, which is very edited. And I just, and then they comment badly on you, but I just want people to meet me in person to actually realize that I'm a really nice guy. And I guess for the reason people follow you is, I guess they try to live vicariously through you. We're living this exotic life. We're working on this yacht. We're sailing around the world. Like I get to travel a lot more than most. And I guess this is a lot of people that don't have this opportunity that watch the show. And then they can follow me and see where I'm traveling all over the world. And it's quite a nice thing for them to be able to see what's out there, especially if they can't get out there. And yeah, ideally, I'd like to inspire people and show them good things, but it doesn't always come out that way. And if I get asked back for another season, that's my main objective. Honestly saying, unless you create a bit of controversy, unless you're a character that stands out, you're not going to be asked again on any show such as... No, and drama doesn't follow me normally on everyday life. I don't know what it is when we're filming, but I think they hire 
the type of people like that on below deck, the type of the mentality, same mentality. So they will clash or they won't clash. And it does create for a good TV show. As we're on a normal yacht, you want to hire the people that are going to get along the best because you want it to be a good environment. So I guess there's always going to be a, guess, a bit of drama and controversy if you do hire unlike-minded or like-minded people. And I guess, I don't know, maybe I'm a funny guy and... Yeah, I guess i got to think about that one a little bit more. <laughs> but I have to say, when it comes to Below Deck, the entire franchise on Bravo, we are dealing with the younger end of the scale, generally speaking. We are dealing with beautiful people because you don't get a job on a yacht unless you are, quote unquote, beautiful. So it is a different sort of concept. We're, we're not talking about middle age or older people. We are talking about young people that are just getting into the stride of their lives, discovering themselves. So they're bound to make a lot of mistakes. Correct. Combine that with the ultra high net worth individual lifestyle. And it makes for some pretty compelling television for these oh, kids. No, no. I think this is why they've had like an almost 30 seasons now with all the franchises. I mean, I think there's five of them or something. And like the originals on episode season 13, we've done so many seasons. So it's, it doesn't seem like it's going to go away anytime soon. It's a good TV show. People can escape to it. It's, something that they would never imagine or experience. Like for me, coming from South Africa, the first time I saw a super yacht here in Palmer, I was blown away. And it was, what was that boat called? I think Benita Blue or something like that that was on the Paseo. One of the blue line, you remember, with the, with the varnish, it was always there. First time I saw that, I was like, what is that? Is that a boat? And that's a small yacht. That's only like a 30 meter or something. And then when you see these massive 100 and something meter boats, you, it's, you're blown away. And someone that lives in the middle of the state, it's in a landlocked state, that hasn't been to the ocean much or seen boats like this size, it's something that you can't really comprehend. And it's like all this well, I mean, money. just the other day, I think Mark Zuckerberg's yacht is in Palmer. No, his boat moment. was here in Palmer. So see the size of that thing. You put a hide and seek on that, you'd never find someone. It's over 100 meters. Why does someone need a boat that much? It's, but they'd well, also like think Jeff, people like do so Jeff, much for all the starving kids in Ethiopia and stuff like that. Meanwhile, they've got 200 dog. Well, quarter of a billion dollars yacht that's interesting yeah i guys we won't get into the ethics of it all because i find it highly it's frustrating for me at times i get quite frustrated because i i do a lot of research into sort of the gap that is going on between the wealthy the haves and the have-nots as it were um and you see that gap widening and then Jeff Bezos comes out and, and the biggest yacht ever built and then he's got this support yacht for his girlfriend's helicopter and it just, it makes you think twice, okay? Oh, it makes me right? think twice all the time. <laughs> yeah, why don't you guys donate $1 every month to this cause? Meanwhile, these guys are building a boat that costs half a billion dollars. Don't build the boat and take the world out of starvation. We're not going to get into that. No, I mean, no. Either money, I would probably it. also have a yacht, to be honest. And I can't. <laughs> it's quite, quite a contradictory thing to say, but. I think if I had a choice, I would have a sailing boat. And no, no, be in some of the most remote places, so I wouldn't have to deal with people. I think that's me too. Yeah, in the Pacific, some of this beautiful, a lot of sea life, not many people. That's generally why you have a yacht, is to have the privacy and just being by yourself. It's like a seven-star hotel, but it's all to yourself. But then yeah. you see all the boats go to the same places every yes. single year. Same charter, same place, which I find very strange. We've had repeat charter guests that's gone to the same place year after year it's like you were here last year and we wonder what they speak about it's like they're all having a cigar it's, Ooh, yeah last year the cigar wasn't as good this year it's go somewhere new explore somewhere different but isn't that a whole yachting theme too it's like the fear of missing out because they've all got to be in monaco for the formula one or they've all got to be yeah. here for it's like why do you have that yacht and, and not only the fact that the bigger the yacht the more crew that are needed to keep it running so oh, you're yeah. not actually getting away from life. You're just going onto the water with the other 50 people that you normally hang out with. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There's no seclusion. There's no vacation about it. And then you start talking about security and then you start, the list goes on. And now we're talking cybersecurity is becoming such an issue now on yachts because anybody can take control of your yacht if you don't have yeah, that Yeah, exactly. Protected. And then you, yeah. It's, just, then what, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. But Gary, I want to say thank you for your time, and I hope that your fans do get to see you on Below Deck again in a coming season. And to the listeners out there, I knew Gary prior to all this Below Deck 
Bravo stuff. And I have to say, yes, he is a ladies man, 100,000%, but he is as well very sweet, very kind, funny. And I would love to have a beer with him again one day and have some laughs because he's always good for some laughs. So much. I appreciate that. You're not a demon, not the way no, you're no. made out to be in certain ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No, not at all. And that's the thing is people have this perception of you because they've seen you on a TV show or what they read in the news agencies. And any news is good. No news is good news. And people will bring people down just for an article. And although the only thing I can say is maybe meet someone first or don't have your whole perception of them or what you've seen on a TV show. There's always two sides to a story. But yeah, people are going to be they're going to believe what they want at the end of the day. So be it. I think there's always three sides to every story. Yeah. And then the truth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Truth has. Yes. You know what? At the end of the day, Gary, the fact is you are carrying on with your life. You've got a great future ahead of you. One thing I did want to ask you, actually, was what do you suggest to these young people that are coming into the industry, making the kind of money that they make coming straight out of the home? What I have seen in my past, and I'm sure at your age now, you've seen these yachts come in and they're blowing their money on things such as parties, drugs and alcohol, of course, but you know, just buying the most frivolous things. What would you suggest? Because now you're a homeowner and you actually have been a homeowner in South Africa for a while now as well. Tell them what they should be doing with their money. Yeah. When I started yachting, I was terrible with my money. I would do exactly what you said. Work for a season and then take a season off buy nice things, go travel the world, stay in nice hotels. But I would, what I can suggest now, what I can recommend is invest in yourself. For example, do courses. If you want to become a captain, do as many courses as you can. Climb the ladder because it's only getting harder and harder these days. And also use your money wisely. If I started investing and buying houses when I first started yachting, I probably could have retired by now. But because you live this exotic and lavish lifestyle, with the guests on board, you want to recreate this when you're off the boat because you've been serving it and you want what you have had but been working for. So yeah, if you can invest in yourself, do as many courses as you can, try and invest in property and investments because we do get paid pretty well in yachts. There is no pension for us when we leave. So you've got to think about your future. And if you can start doing that from when you start yachting, and if you've done it for as long as I have, you wouldn't be thinking about that again. You'd be thinking more about retirement. Which is, yeah, which is very feasible if you work on yachts and you save your money. And there is a time limit for yachting, unless, of course, your goal is to become captain. But a lot of them out there, there is, they don't want to become a captain. So there's definitely an age limit. And it's not an age limit where you see at big corporations or CEOs or whatever making that kind of money. It is quite a young age yeah. limit. The um, oldest person on the boat is going to be the captain and maybe the engineer after that. But then below that, I don't know many chief stewardesses that are over 35, 40 maybe. And then the rest of the crew are, are generally pretty young. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, if you can save your money, this is not a not something, you, not an industry you can work in for 30 years unless you want to become the captain. So, yeah, be smart with your money. Don't be like me and try to save as much as possible. You earn enough money to have a good life and to save. So, yeah, that would be my first suggestion. And what is your goal? Or do you want to be a captain or do you have different goals um, of land work? Well, I would, ideally, I'd like to do more TV shows. Having gone down this route, I would like to see what else there is out there. But yeah, I would also, if that all fails, I would like to be a captain. But leaving to do the med season and the Caribbean season might be a bit much. So either rotation or driving a small boat here in Mallorca, like a 30 meter that you leave for three months of the year and then you spend the rest of the time here. Or do day trips out of Mallorca. I want to be a bit more grounded and I feel I haven't been grounded for the last 10 years. That's my main priority now, really. It's funny how that comes with age. Yeah, I know, right? Before, I just wanted to leave constantly when I was younger. Oh, next place. Cool. Where are we going now? And I'm like, I just want to settle a little bit, be a bit more grounded. I'm going to provide all of your social media links below this interview when it airs. Gary, I wish you the best of luck. And I look forward to seeing you on TV screen soon in the future. And yeah, we'll have to... Keep in touch and touch base once in a while to see where you are and what you're up yeah, to. Definitely. Sounds good to me. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. You've been watching another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs. This has been Gary King from Below Deck Sailing Yacht, part of the Bravo franchise. My name is Rhea. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time.